Hi, welcome on board everybody to Tenon Tours first ever Railing Europe virtual series. Uh, my name is Gabby Perlinger. I am one of the product managers for um, Tenon Tours. And uh, I am a, what you might call a, a Swiss aficionado. I love everything that has to do with cheese and chocolate. Uh, I'm also a huge rail fan. Uh, I'm going to try to keep all of my train puns to a minimum, uh, but I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you can uh, bear through some of that. Um, uh, we will actually uh, also be uh, uh, sharing the screen uh, and uh, taking a little bit of time from a uh, very special guest, uh, Martin Oster from uh, the Swiss Travel System Network will actually be joining us uh, for a conversation and uh, we will um, just try to impart some good knowledge, some fun facts, and hopefully uh, inspire you uh, and inform you with some really good uh, useful information for Switzerland. That's me right there without the glasses, in case you couldn't tell. Um, so um, additionally, uh, thanks to Martin, we will also be um, giving away a couple of prizes. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned for more information on that. We'll be posting some information on the um, comments section. And uh, in addition to that, uh, if you have any questions, please do make sure that you're posting your questions in, in that same section, um, because we will uh, try to um, answer those questions at the end of the presentation. So stay tuned for more. Uh, and hopefully, again, um, you will find this informative and fun. So uh, just a couple of things. I personally always like to share um, some good information about uh, the country itself, what it is that I love about Switzerland. Uh, what I find interesting about Switzerland. Uh, it's a very compact country. Uh, it's actually right in the heart of Europe. So it's, uh, you know, very easy to get to. It's got, even though it's, it is compact, it, it, there's tons of things to do. Um, what a lot of people enjoy doing there. And again, not just the tourists, but the locals as well. Uh, some adventure, hiking, uh, paragliding, kayaking, uh, a lot of that type of stuff. Uh, you also have plenty of food and wine to and things. Uh, I mentioned cheese and chocolate, of course, uh, but there's also, you know, fondue, uh, roshti. There's all sorts of really wonderful twist dishes that you can uh, find and taste when you're there. Uh, lots of culture and festivals. Uh, so those are just a few of my favorite things. Uh, you also have uh, lots of varied climates and terrains. So again, for such a small country, uh, it's kind of interesting um, how different the terrain can be depending on where you're at. You have alpine valleys and glaciers. And then when you start getting into the lake region, um, then you have tropical palm trees and almost a completely different climate, which is very interesting. Uh, it is an all year destination. So I think for some people, you think of Switzerland and immediately you think of snow, but uh, there is plenty to do in the summertime. You have uh, lots of, uh, again, hiking, uh, mountaintop excursions that you can do. And then of course, in the winter, you can do the winter sports and also some really charming and beautiful Christmas markets to visit. Um, they have a very diverse culture actually. Um, and that's because there were so many different influences. They actually speak four different languages in Switzerland, uh, German, French, uh, Romansh, which is actually uh, uh, derived from a Roman, uh, uh, Latin. Uh, so it's very interesting. And then also Italian uh, down close to the Italy region. Um, but I should note that English is very widely spoken throughout. So, um, you know, again, for our American visitors, it's actually quite easy uh, to uh, communicate and to get around. Um, I did mention that it's right in the heart of Europe, uh, and it's neighboring five different countries. Uh, you have um, France to the west, Germany to the north and east-ish, uh, Austria also to the east, and Italy to the south. And then you have the very small principality of Liechtenstein, uh, which is nestled right in between. So, uh, And that's a very easy day trip to do as well. And, uh, if you ever go to Switzerland, don't you know, miss actually an opportunity to stop into Liechtenstein so you can say you've visited a principality. 
Um, it's a great international gateway. So they have lots of flights coming in uh, from all over. Zurich Airport is generally voted a very great airport to fly into. Uh, and one of the things that is little known is that they actually have a train station right at the airport. So you can either go straight from the airport, take a train right into downtown Zurich, and then start your vacation. You can either do that or even just take off from Zurich and go straight to Lucerne, for example, or somewhere else. So um, it's very easy to get around. Um, as far as uh, the demographics, it's really actually great for everybody, but it is a really good value for groups and families. Um, if you have parents traveling with young kids um, from the ages of 6 to 16, if the parent has a, a Swiss travel pass, which we'll talk about a little bit more, they will um, the kids will actually travel for free. So that's actually a very good value. Um, and then as we're going to cover throughout this uh, presentation, uh, there are uh, lots of miles, uh, about 18,000 miles of rail and road and water ways in Switzerland. So uh, it's uh, really easy to get around. Uh, now, these are my top nine favorite um, reasons why you should travel by train in Switzerland. Uh, of course, you get the best views of the countryside uh, that you might not be able to see if you are driving or uh, on a big freeway. So this is actually, I think, in my opinion, the best way to see the, the countryside and um, just some of the most amazing sights. Uh, I mentioned driving. I mean, this is actually uh, the best way to just leave the driving to somebody else. You can really just sit back and enjoy. You don't have to worry about parking or you know any of the added stress of uh, filling up the tank with gas or anything like that. So it's actually, um, you know, a, a much easier uh, way to travel and to get around. Um, the punctuality, so I, hopefully you've all heard, but the Swiss are actually uh, known for punctuality and that definitely carries over to their train schedules. And they um, trains had usually depart at, at least 90% punctuality, if not more. Um, and then the convenience of just going from city center to city center, uh, meaning, you know, you can avoid having to go through airports or any other kind of long lines um, and um, things like that. Uh, you have no extra baggage fees. Uh, so, you know, but, I mean, within reason, of course, if you're traveling with bulky things, you might want to consider uh, doing some sort of a luggage transfer, uh, paid luggage transfer. But generally, you don't get paid for every piece of luggage or backpack that you bring on board. Um, and there is a lot more leg room and wider seats uh, on trains. So it's actually nice. Plus, you get to get up and move around, which is nice to just be able to stretch the legs and uh, actually uh, move around and go to the restaurant car or the bar car for a drink. Um, so it's lovely. Um, very easy to border to cross the borders actually into other countries. So, um, you know, you kind of avoid having to do all of the passport control, which is nice. And then um, for people traveling with young children, um, usually the trains are equipped with lots of good stuff, such as changing rooms and family cars. The family cars are nice. It just kind of gives them room to play and do, you know, things that kids need to do. Um, so, um, and last but not least, this is, you know, dear, near and dear to my heart. It's something that has been, become much more important, I think, um, you know, especially lately. But it's a very environmentally friendly and sustainable way to travel. So uh, I mentioned earlier that we were going to be joined by the expert. This is Martin Uster. He is actually a friend of mine, and uh, he knows really everything that can be said about uh, traveling just by any means uh, necessary throughout S Switzerland. So um, welcome, Martin. And uh, here we go. He's joining us actually straight from Switzerland, if you couldn't tell. It's fantastic background. And, uh, you know, I really wish that we could swap places right now. Um, <laughs> so uh, I... Why don't, do you want to introduce yourself and just give us a little bit of information about, you know, how long you've been doing this for? Well, uh, grüezi, bonsoir, bon, buonasera. Uh, hello from Switzerland. Uh, it's it's uh, already dinner time over here. Uh, I'm really happy to, to join this live opportunity. Uh, I just got back from New York. That's where I'm based with Switzerland Tourism. 
uh, to Switzerland. I stay here for two weeks before I'm heading back. So I'm with uh, Switzerland Tourism representing the Swiss travel system, which is our wonderful uh, system of public transport. And that's what I've been doing for the last uh, couple of years. So we went through the good times before the pandemic and uh, we will be back again, uh, hopefully, uh, as soon as possible, but um, Switzerland is open and uh, we can travel at least. And that's what I'm taking the opportunity uh, right now. That's good to hear. So since you just flew from New York to uh, Switzerland and you've uh, kind of had that experience, can you share with us a little bit about the key points of, you know, the safety and uh, entry requirements into the into the country? Yes, so Switzerland uh, has opened to uh, North America, specifically to the US uh, end of June and a couple of weeks later also uh, to Canadian citizens. Uh, what you need to enter Switzerland is uh, for the vaccinated, it's basically just to fill in the entry form that's uh, online um, and you have to show the CDC card or to the, the app uh, to prove uh, that you're double vaccinated. Even if you're not vaccinated, then you have to showcase an, an PCR test. And that's pretty straightforward. And that's um, since end of June. And since then, luckily, uh, things have been stable in terms of uh, entry restrictions. There was no changes, which made uh, life a lot easier to plan travel and uh, and events and, and so on. And uh, so far, um, we're looking at a pretty stable situation. That's great. That's good to hear. So definitely no no quarantine, which is good. Uh, and uh, yeah, so how about on the train itself or on the, all of the different transportation um, forms of transportation? What are some of the things and the steps that are taking really right. to to keep it uh you know safe for all travelers sure sure yeah so that's been ongoing since uh, a while longer already uh, obviously since last year you have to wear a mask wherever you're inside uh, public transportation mode whatever mode of transportation it is they all operate under the same uh, protocols and guidelines so whether it is a in train, inner city, regional train, a postal bus, uh, boat, or the mountain cable cars and so on, they all have the same uh, protocols. And uh, inside mask on, uh, within the stations, whatever is uh, aired outside, uh, you don't have to have mask on. But there's no checks or anything like that uh, on your status. Other than that, it's a very... Uh, a frequent system in terms of connections so uh, there's no seats blocked or anything like that uh, it's easy to spread out on on, on the entire system and uh, select your time to 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 travel also you can really avoid the peak times that's great yeah so so basically you can kind of move around if you want to go to an area that is a little bit less crowded you can just kind yeah. of move to either another car or another part of the car without worrying about that. That's great. So I, this is something that I wanted to just jump right in because I feel like, you know, Switzerland has such a great transportation network uh, and uh, really, in my opinion, one of the best in the world. Uh, and for me, uh, just from personal experience, I feel like one of the best tools to get around is the Swiss travel pass. So I was wondering if maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit more about how that works and uh, really what are some of the benefits of it? Absolutely, yeah. We uh, have the legacy of having an interconnected uh, public transport system with a ton of different companies that operate all those trains, buses and boats. But they, at some point in the history, they agreed on the same tariff and on the same system. And with that, we have uh, the benefit of accessing uh, entire Switzerland with the same kind of tickets. So, and uh, for, for the visitors, we created the Swiss Travel Pass uh, decades ago, and that's your one single ticket to the entire country. It's very convenient. It's very comprehensive. Uh, it's uh, sort of a hop-on, hop-off ticket to all modes of public transport throughout Switzerland. So it covers every single train. It even covers the premium panoramic uh, rail journeys. Uh, it covers all the local public transport systems uh, in and around the cities, like the, the trams, streetcars, and so on. 
and uh, it covers our beautiful boats uh, across the the alpine lakes that are scheduled services as well and those uh, iconic yellow postal buses uh, wherever there's no more train there's a connection to some sort of a different uh, mode of public transport and that's all within the same system so uh, you don't have to to buy different kind of tickets to go all over the place with the swiss travel pass that's your most convenient way to uh, just sit in, in whatever connection you you figure out you can be traveling very flexibly and get around very easy this way uh, other than that it's also um, comes with the benefit uh, that it covers some mountain excursions uh, so that's quite a, a lot of an added value um, and then generally uh, so the most of the other mountain excursions are actually 50 percent off and Plus, uh, it comes with the Swiss Museum Pass, so that actually covers uh, admission to 500 museums throughout Switzerland. So that's a, a great added value. And also, uh, if you travel, if you travel as a family, um, kids up to the age of 16, they travel for free along with their parents. So that's also very generous uh, compared to other uh, European rail carriers. So that makes it really your ticket to entire Switzerland. And when I talk about a legacy, really no other country in the world has such a comprehensive system and uh, is accessible with one single uh, ticket, uh, really to the whole country. So that's why we market Switzerland also. That's the way to travel to Switzerland is by train, bus and boat. Yeah, it's it was I mean, the time that I actually uh, was lucky enough to use it, I was just blown away by how easy it was. And, uh, you know, just the fact that even uh, when we use the tram in Zurich, for example, the light rail system like that was covered, you know, just it really just kind of took everything else out of the equation and all you need is just that one ticket or that one pass to really get around and uh, do and see some amazing things. So uh, I definitely uh, appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us all of the points on that one because I, I and I can speak from, um, you know, from experience of how, how easy uh, it is to use. So, uh, and I think we mentioned, and there was something in the comments about a, a free giveaway of a first class uh, eight day Swiss rail pass. So uh, please uh, make sure that you're looking into the comments section there just to, uh, you know, read more about it and what you can do to enter for that giveaway. Um, Going next, uh, actually, the other question that I had was, you know, what if um, actually instead of, you know, and the pass is good for when you're wanting to do really a, a good amount of travel, really, because that's really what you want to try to pack as much as you can into this one pass as far as, you know, the amount of days, the amount of things that you're going to do in those days. But um, what if uh, somebody is just really doing a very short and sweet itinerary and they're only doing a couple of trains, perhaps, and maybe the pass isn't the best value for that? Can people still just buy, you know, train tickets uh, individually or how does that work? Right, depends on your itinerary. So if uh, Swiss Travel Pass starts with four days, uh, I mean with three days, three, five, eight or 15 days are the durations of the Swiss Travel Passes. But if that really doesn't fit in your itinerary, if you travel only for a day or two, um, or if you don't travel as extensively, as you just said, uh, stay in, in a resort a little longer, the Swiss Travel Pass might not pay off, but then you can buy other uh, tickets. Obviously you can buy point to point tickets on the go, everywhere. And they're the same benefit. You just buy it from whatever Zurich airport all the way to, to Zermatt, the ski resort, for example, that's one ticket. Even so you travel with different modes, with different companies, that's all interconnected as an, as an, uh, from a tariff side. So that's easy. Uh, there is also saver tickets. If you know a specific connection uh, ahead and you plan on that and you will be on that specific connection also, then you can save uh, quite a lot of uh, money to a regular point of point ticket. There is also day passes, one day passes to the entire system. If you just uh, travel for one day, for example, that's something that the Swiss do often. If they don't regularly use public transport, they might go for that specific weekend with day passes. Uh, that's very comprehensive. And uh, there's all sorts of uh, tickets and passes available. 
Okay. So with the day pass that allows them to do, for example, like a round trip, like if they wanted to do a day trip to St. Gall from Zurich to St. Gallen, for example, and then come back, it would all be covered under one day. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, before we move on to that, my next question, uh, I think we have some questions coming in live, so hopefully we'll try to answer uh, some of that. Um, Kirk is asking if there is much of a language barrier. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I can speak for myself when I was there. I didn't have any problem. Uh, the majority of people there speak at minimum three languages, and English usually is one of them. Uh, and as you can tell from Martin's, uh, you know, he's very fluent. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to get a lot of the time while you're there. I don't know if you want to add to that, Martin. No, I mean, it's, it's a heart of, in, we're in the heart of Europe. So we're used to have other languages spoken around us all the time. Obviously, French and Italian are the closest to us. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm Swiss German speaking. Uh, but English is widely spoken, especially among the, uh, the younger uh, population they all speak pretty much fluently English so it's very easy to get around with with uh, all those languages and uh, it's Europe in a nutshell to have all those languages nearby you really literally uh, take a train and then you're uh, another station and you already could tell from the names of the the places oh that's actually another language already and there's not really a, a, a language border or anything like that within within switzerland you can all experience that uh within small distances mm -hmm. and there's there's some great apps and things that you can use as well and i know that there's google translate as well which some people are starting to use more and more for for certain things so it's nice to have those kinds of tools available i think technologically to assist back in the day you'd have to pack a dictionary with you and you know fumble through it and nowadays you just type something in and then it'll it'll tell you exactly what it is that, and how to say it and how to pronounce it, which is great. So um, <clears throat> so speaking of, uh, I wanted to actually ask you about um, luggage tips and what you recommend as far as, you know, packing, uh, how, you know, how much luggage do you recommend that people take, um, that sort of thing. I think it's one of those important questions to talk about. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um... It obviously, again, depends what you're going to do in Switzerland. So if you're going to ski, you will obviously bring a large ski bag. Uh, if you're going to do some hiking, you might be more uh, light packed. Um, but it's a frequent questions where, question when it comes along um, using public transport or not. Um, obviously, people are worried with uh, a lot of luggage. Uh, you have to enter multiple trains. Uh, you have to change uh, from train to a bus and so on. That's how it works in Switzerland. So what are you doing with all that luggage? Uh, and we'll have to structure it a little bit. First, what you have to, to say about it is it is really easy to change from all sorts of different uh, public transports because it's so well interconnected. And often um, when you get the, 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 the schedule, it tells you, for example, in Bern, the capital, um, uh, you change from one train to another and you have eight minutes. And as an international guest, you would think of uh, changing a terminal at the airport. You will never do that in eight minutes. But the stations are small. They all have the same signage and it's superbly well organized in terms of that these trains are actually uh, matching each other's uh, arriving and departure times. And there is escalators and elevators in place and also uh, ramps that connect with the platforms. So everybody carries along some sort of luggage and doesn't worry too much about it. So the, the locals travel with skis, obviously, in the wintertime, or strollers and so on, uh, a lot of bikes and so on. Um, of course, when it's really busy and if, you, if you're not really very active and you have a ton of luggage, then it's not the ideal thing, but it's actually doable. Uh, that's what uh, I have to, to say first. For all those that don't want to schlep the luggage along, there is these wonderful luggage services in place that also are provided by the whole system. So they work uh, within entire Switzerland. But there is a, a variety of services, so it really depends a little bit and you have to dig in deeper. Uh, but generally you can do, for example, point-to-point -point luggage services within the same day. So 
from uh, Zurich to Zermatt to your hotel within the same day that's delivered it comes along with restrictions you cannot do that within the same day from everywhere to everywhere but the majority of the of the destinations are covered for example and that's something what we really market also abroad uh, because it's also reliable and it works uh, but you need really the help of uh, the travel trade so tenant can help you arrange that those kind of luggage services along your itinerary uh, to, to range that ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's, like you said, lots of lots of fine details on some of that. Usually it's it's dropping off early enough, right? There's usually a cutoff by a certain time. It needs The luggage needs to be dropped off in order for it to be same day. Otherwise, it could be next day delivery kind of thing. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, fantastic service uh, and certainly something that, you know, hopefully uh, other countries uh, will follow suit with because generally in other countries, you do have to kind of, uh, as you use the word, schlep, schlep your luggage uh, with mm -hmm. you, uh, no matter how big or how small. So um, you did mention train stations. So I just kind of want to dig a little into that um you know what what other kinds of services do the train stations offer like you know we're, we're we have a certain i, I think uh, idea of how train stations are here in the united states so i just kind of wanted to spell of the differences basically and and just how how well equipped and wonderful even just architecturally the the train stations can be Right. What needs to be said here is really that the, the rail stations, they form the heart of the cities and towns in Switzerland. Basically, everything evolved and developed around the rail stations. So they're not somewhere outside and you have to, 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 to figure a way how to get there or from there to a hotel. Generally, they, they're really the heart of the city, like especially the, the cities, Zurich, Bern, the capital, Geneva and so on with from the rail station within minutes you're in in the nicest hotels in the shopping streets all those pedestrian areas and so on that's good old europe you know the old towns uh, they were connected first with with rail service um and often therefore also um public transport is just simply the easier way to get to these places uh, because you don't find easily parking around there and many of the hotels are really at these pedestrian so zones so it's easiest to just walk over from the rail stations so given that central location rail stations also are um, uh, have a central function in terms of uh, shopping and services so especially in the bigger city rail stations, there is an uh, amount of, of shops and, and, and services with extended opening hours uh, that you sometimes find a little limited in Switzerland. Uh, evenings and weekends are quite uh, limited in terms of opening hours. But around the rail station, everything stays open for longer hours. Uh, there is also um, on all the SPB, the, the Fe Swiss Federal Railway uh, stations there is free wi-fi uh, these stations are transportation hubs so everything connects around here you might come in with the intercity and from here you take the postal bus then on to the countryside to the resort that you're staying uh, often they're also very close to the uh, the lake uh, specifically for example lucerne uh, you walk out of the rail station you're directly at the pier uh, where you join all these boat services across the lake so it's really it forms the the, the hubs uh, to get everywhere yeah, that's that's a great point, especially about the proximity to other things to make it so easy to connect. Um, how about lockers? Are there, you know, lockers and things where people can store backpacks and things like that for a certain period of time? I actually wanted to mention that with the luggage. That is a, mm. one of my favorite things about the system really is, uh, makes it so flexible. If you carry along some piece of luggage, you can just leave it somewhere in these stations, whatever major stations uh, there is. They have luggage lockers in all different sizes. Uh, you pay with a credit card and you can leave it there. And this way you can 
stroll around the city and take a later connection to continue. You don't have to worry about the, the luggage, especially if it's the old towns with those cobblestone streets. Uh, you don't want to bring your suitcase along these. So those are uh, locals are always accessible. And in some of the major rail stations, they also have luggage desks mm. where you really have uh, you can uh, ship your luggage from there uh, or you just, just store it. And you don't need to have reservations on that. That's really a flexible way to to travel around so that's what i always tell people um if you do this and that connection you might want to stop in between uh, because it just looks beautiful and uh, you have some more extra time use that uh, kind of service uh, leave the luggage anywhere that's really uh, very helpful to uh, make your way around switzerland it just allows more flexibility, right? They can just yeah. kind of go and stop and then without having to worry about, you know, luggage and everything else. So that's great. Um, as far as this is a question that I get asked a lot, you know, what is what in your opinion is the big difference between first class and second class on a Swiss train? They're also a bit of a North America's pers uh, um, perspective, if you want. Second class is non, not at all secondary or, or uh, you know, shabby, dirty or anything. It's, it's actually totally fine. Second class is just um, the majority of the seats are in the second class and it might be uh, quite crowded, especially during peak hours and so on. Second class is often full and people walk from carriage to carriage to, to find an open seat. So that's the major benefit of first class. It is more quiet and you have more room. So generally the seats are also a little bit wider. You have uh, all over, you have um, sockets to plug in. Uh, it's just more of a comfort thing. Uh, and the nice thing about it is also you can totally flexible upgrade to the first class any given time. If second is full, uh, you just walk and sit down in the first class and you pay the addition, the, the supplement directly to the conductor. He won't blame you if you enter with a second class ticket, but you have to pay the difference, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. That's something I didn't know. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like that's, uh, you know, sometimes a benefit of just having that flexibility, but, um, that mostly works though, when it's a kind of a, uh, an open style train, meaning 99, 98% of the trains in Swiss are open that way, where it's sort of a first come first serve basis. But, um, can you tell us a little bit about which types of trains in Switzerland would require a seat reservation that you would need to reserve in advance? Right. So that general rule is you don't need a seat reservation, but it often takes a little bit of an explanation because there is some connections that are predominantly for a tourism purpose and they don't run every hour or every half hour or so. And there, obviously, you need a seat reservation. And I'm specifically talking about the Glacier Express, the Benina Express, and the Gotthard Panoramic. So those are our premium panoramic rail journeys. Uh, there is not the locals on board of these. Uh, so that's really a, a connection, for example, on the Glacier Express, that's from Zermatt all the way to St. Moritz, that runs two or three times a day and they do seat allocations there. That's where you need a seat reservation. But everything else that's public transport has hourly or in between the cities, even half hourly connections. Nobody's traveling with a seat res reservations on these because people get on and off and they're used to, to have free seating all, all the way around. So the general rule is for most trains, you don't need any. Perfect. So the more frequent the train, the less reservations is required with the panoramic trains because they're special and they have a, only a limited number of seats and they only usually operate a, a few times a day. It's usually that's why it's required. And you want to and with those, really, you don't want to take it any chance anyway. You want to make sure that you have a seat on a panoramic train because it's such a experience in and of itself. Right. Um, so, uh, Christina has a question about, uh, trains, whether they travel overnight. Uh, I don't know if you want to take this one or you want me to answer it. Sure. It's also actually a question I typically get from overseas visitors. And there we again have to explain how small Switzerland is. So there is no <laughs> overnight trains. I mean, from any given point within two hours, you're abroad already. 
Uh, there is overnight trains starting from Zurich towards uh, Vienna, for example, uh, and, and so on. Increasingly, they are getting more uh, connections again abroad because uh, it's a very environmental, sustainable way to travel. So within Europe, rather than take a flight uh, to another country, you take those overnight trains. But within Switzerland, uh, there is none. Yeah, it's. I think I looked it up and it's about maybe six hours to cross from east to west and then four hours to cross north to south. So uh, they would have to slow down that uh, that yeah. train to make it overnight. Uh, it would have to be crawling pretty much. Uh, but yeah, I've taken actually an overnight train from Basel uh, to Amsterdam one time. And that was actually quite nice uh, because you're sleeping. Uh, so you're saving yourself a hotel night. And then you're also traveling at the same time. So for somebody who's like a type A personality like me, who just loves to multitask, like that was really like feeding into all of that. So um, Diane is asking, is it travel? Is it safe to travel single? So for solo travel, travelers out there. Um, I, I personally think it's one of the safest countries in the world. Uh, but you can you can also chime in if you want, Martin. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're in Switzerland at any given time. Don't worry about anything. Uh, trains are a, a, a popular way of transport anyway, also for the Swiss. So at any given time, there's other people and the stations are super clean and uh, really also well watched over and every um city to city connection uh has an, an conductor on board as well uh, they do also you know there's certain times uh saturday nights friday nights and so on lots of young people um having their parties and uh, and so on and then they really patrol those trains to to make sure everything stays clean and in order and so on but in terms of uh, safety you don't have to worry about anything in, in, in public transport right yeah i i agree it's it's definitely i never had the feeling of you know being concerned and um even just walking around you know zurich or lucerne uh some of the other cities they were just you know just general feeling of of safety all around so um this is more of a question for you martin so it's specific to you oh <laughs> hey bring him on just kidding um so do you this is more just a personal question so i just want to know uh what is your favorite thing about traveling by rail in switzerland? well switzerland is just so unbelievably scenic yeah. that's the the great thing about traveling uh on public transport I mean, uh, once you just get out of the airport in Zurich, you're already looking at the Alps. Uh, they're so nearby. You just hop on those trains and all of those uh, public transport lines, they travel from the cities through the countryside. You're watching the, the farms, uh, the cows outside. You're watching the, the mountains. Uh, that's a way to discover and that's a, a beautiful uh, way how to use public transportation and actually um, such an advantage over just driving around where you have to watch traffic and uh, you look for parking and so on and this way that's that's really a major advantage for for uh, that counts towards public transportation um, also as we said the locals use it i mean locals and visitors they share uh, the same right uh, it's it's uh, the way you want to experience a country, how they travel around. Um, that's what you want to do as well. And you get into conversations. And it's often also on, on, on the weekends when I'm traveling around, you see alpinists or skiers or in summertime mountain bikers, you get into conversation. Where have you been? How are the conditions? And so on. Mm. So it brings people together. Uh, increasingly only uh, again once we're, we're out of this uh, this type of special years and uh, another favorite thing really it is very reliable the yeah. trains are on time you can plan ahead uh, you can you know if you meet other people you can say i'm at 1050 tomorrow at 1050 i'm actually uh, arranged to be uh, at, at lucerne where i meet a friend of mine and i will be there at 1050 the train will not be an hour late or something like that. That's uh, also very beneficial for the system. Yeah, that also speaks to my 
my type A personality. So I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, yeah, I love that. I love the the fact of getting to know the locals. I think that, you know, it's nice, of course, when you're sometimes some people just prefer to have the, the privacy of their own car. But to me, you know, going to another country, it's all about really getting to know the people, getting to see how, how the locals do things. And so it's, it's really fantastic. I think that's a really great point that you made. So, um, and then this is another sort of like, what's your favorite thing kind of question, but this is, um, you know, what is a, a hidden Swiss gem that you would like to recommend to our viewers? So something that's just like, maybe like, you know, not, not as common or something that is kind of off the beaten path. Right. I mean, often, I mean, usually you would look for the highlights first, but I always recommend to look out for those lesser traveled uh, regional trains or lines that might not have a name, uh, a famous name like a Glacier Express or the Benina Express, for example. But there is very scenic routes out there uh, that are not per definition uh, a touristic panoramic line. Uh, one example that I often use there is the Four Alpen Express. It's, um, first of all, whatever is called express is definitely not a fast train. <laughs> Those are usually the very slow ones. Uh, and that's the connection between Lucerne, the heart of Switzerland, and uh, St. Gallen. It's all the way in eastern Switzerland. And that really goes across the foothills uh, of the of the, of the the pre-Alps. So on one side of the, the train, you're always looking at the Alps. Uh, and that's a typical connection that stops in all these small farming villages. And you see tons of cows grazing. Uh, you cross along... The, the beautiful lakes uh, and, and rivers and so on. Uh, it's not the fast connection. If you uh, punch in the stations, Lucerne to St. Gallen, it shows you the intercity via Zurich, quick connection airport, and you're out there in St. Gallen. But if you take the regional train, uh, it, you actually, uh, often it's, it's more scenic. So if you have a little bit more time, look out for these. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. Yes. I, I, I love that irony that something called express is actually not, uh, just the fact that it's, you know, uh, it actually is a little bit slowed down. So because it's regional and you can actually experience it more and you can see more and actually enjoy some of the views a little bit more. So that's fantastic. I, I really love all of your answers. I, I thank you so much for, for this conversation, you know, and sharing all of of your information and insights and just, uh, you know, your wealth of, of knowledge uh, to share with, with our viewers. Um, I did want to, um, you're, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start talking now about some of our, our tenant tour um, suggested itineraries uh, just for our, our customers and for our potential customers and viewers who might be interested in, and in perhaps, a, uh, you know, booking a, a Swiss package with a, a with trains with us, but um, the Grand Train Tour of Switzerland really is uh, a marketed uh, itinerary, which is fantastic. And that's actually from the Swiss tourism, correct? Um, and, uh, it's great. What's great about it is that it can be customized into seven different modules. Actually, it could be customized into an infinite number of modules, but really those are the main seven ones that actually are out there. Um, and it covers 800 miles of itinerary. These are just some of the facts. It, it, if you do the full original itinerary, then you would go through all four of the language regions of Switzerland. You'll pass through three different Alpine passes. Uh, you'll visit five different UNESCO World Heritage Sites. You'll see 11 lakes. And in my estimation, you will probably see quite a few cows with cowbells, probably. <laughs> so um, I don't know if uh, we can put up that slide, but basically um, we have uh, at least highlighted three of the different um, uh, itineraries that we can do. So these are just in order of uh, the length. Uh, the longest, the original is eight days and seven nights. Again, this can be extended if, if uh, clients would like to do that. Um, but uh, it includes the um, five different panoramic trains, which we'll actually talk about next, uh, and different stays in uh, some of the most fantastic places like Interlaken, Montreux, uh, Zermatt, St. Moritz, Lugano, Lucerne, and St. Gallen. Uh, and you can always tack 
on Zurich at the beginning or end of that, for example. Um, then you also have the classic, uh, which is a little bit shorter, um, and it just cuts out a couple of different things in there, but you still get to travel on the five panoramic trains. Um, and then you can also, if you're short on time and you want to make it even shorter, there's a top attraction. So this is more of just really focusing on the highlights uh, with five days and four nights. Um, and you're staying in Lucerne, Interlock, and Montreux and Zermatt. With all of these, um, uh, you always have the option of adding uh, mountaintop excursions, which we'll also uh, touch upon shortly here. Uh, so, you know, there's never a uh, dull moment as far as the things that you can see and do um, on this on this trip. Uh, I believe the next slide is actually a map, so you can kind of see uh, really all of it. Um, but again, this is more of the module and the different modules that can be done. And it actually also highlights some of the panoramic trains. Um, you mentioned, or Martin mentioned, the Glacier Express, for example, which we'll talk about in just a second. But that is that uh, sort of aqua blue line that connects from Zermatt to St. Moritz. Uh, you also have, they are highlighting here the Veralpen Exp Express, which was one of the hidden gems that Martin uh, also recommended. So that's the one that goes from Lucerne to St. Gallen. So plenty of different things. Uh, and as you can see here, different ways to connect. So you're going all the way from the French speaking side, which is close to Lake Geneva and staying in Montreux. Uh, and then, you know, also going down into Lugano, which is one of the lakes in the Lake District region. Uh, and that's the Italian speaking part. Um, so again, lots, lots to see and do on this itinerary. Um, I believe, uh, I think the next thing is a uh, video perhaps, or no, we have some images. So we've been kind of throwing these in uh, as slides for you. But again, these are just highlights of some of the places that would be visited. Uh, and again, it's great for all year round. So you could do it as a winter um, trip, or you could do it as a summer trip, and you could do it as a, you know, spring and fall. So all year round. Um, I mentioned some of the mountaintop excursions, the Mount Pilatus here. This is actually um, one of my favorite uh, excursions that I did from Lucerne. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, they have a really great uh, uh, folklore about uh, a, um, a dragon that lived on this mountain. Uh, and also, I thought one of the greatest facts that I learned was that it's called Pilatus because there was a, uh, a legend that Pontius Pilate was actually buried there. So just a little bit of history there. Um, but uh, yeah, so here you could see a few of the other destinations. Uh, you have, you can do lots of lake cruising, of course, on one of those 11 lakes that I mentioned. Uh, the Matterhorn, uh, this is a view from uh, the Matterhorn from Zermatt. Um, um, so it's really uh, fantastic. And it's probably one of the most recognized mountain peaks. Uh, if you've ever eaten Toblerone uh, or if you've ever gone to Disneyland, <laughs> you would probably recognize that mountain peak. So this, this is your chance to go see it live and in person. So we'll move on to the next. All right, so this is uh, one of my favorite things to talk about. And Martin, feel free to chime in anytime if you have something to add. But uh, the Glacier Express is uh, really, uh, for some people, this is actually the highlight of their trip. It is definitely one of those instances where Express is not uh, really a good name for it in the term because of how long it takes. It takes about eight hours to finish, uh, you know, from one end to the next. Um, but for good reason, you definitely want, you wouldn't want this train to go fast. This is not a, a route that you would want to do high speed um, because you really want to enjoy the trip as much as possible. Um, we've been talking about panoramic trains, and um, this is a perfect example of it. The reason they're called panoramic trains is because they have these fantastic high windows um, that you can actually get better, the best views out of. So um, that's really part of it, but also because of the beautiful panoramas and the scenery that you're going to roll by. Um, so again, this is this particular one is connecting um, the two Alpine villages of Zermatt to St. Moritz and vice versa. Um, and it takes about eight hours to do. Uh, and it definitely requires a seat reservation because of how long it is. There's uh, normally there's about four trains a day that go. Um, right now, I think there's it's it's uh, only about two. Um, and there is a small period of time during the winter sometimes where about for about a month, uh, usually that sometimes it doesn't run. Correct me if I'm wrong, Martin, but totally correct. Exactly. Yeah. It's Two right now, usually in the summer months, there are three connections a day in each uh, direction. They adapt with the demand right now, and uh, they're, on, they're only um, 
stop operating in early December for a couple of weeks and then uh, the winter again. Fantastic experience also in the winter, obviously pretty different from the summer. Right. Right. Um, one of the newest things about the Glacier Express is that you can actually upgrade to, they have first class and second class, but then they also have a luxury class called excellence class. Um, and that's on the next screen, but basically it is um, an upgraded version. It's, it's very nice, very luxurious. You get uh all every single seat is a window seat, meaning you know you don't have anybody obstructing your view. You also have uh, delicious dining that is served right at your seat and wine and everything else. You have a dedicated person there uh, to basically be at your beck and call. Uh, not to mention that you know it's just a gorgeous uh, whole day experience. Um, so uh, definitely, if you're interested in something like this, I think this is a perfect splurge uh, because then you can just sit. Back back and relax for eight hours and just literally be served hand and foot almost uh, while you're just, you know, soaking in all of the, the wonderful views. So um, did I miss anything on this one, Martin? Are we good? No, I haven't had the chance to do it myself yet. <laughs> but you're totally right. I mean, it's very exclusive. They only mm -hmm. have 20 seats. So that's really something you have to book ways ahead. And uh, it's only since two years they operate this excellence class and uh, it's it sells really well. Yeah, and I mean, as you can tell here, it's leather seats. It's 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 all very very nice. So uh, probably worth uh, worth every dollar uh, if I if I'm gonna guess. I think you and I should go and try it out though soon. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Uh, the next uh, panoramic train I'd like to focus, and I'm gonna probably fly through these because we're running out of time. But this is the Bernina Express. What's special about this particular uh, panoramic route is that it combines train and bus. So you're basically taking the train from St. Moritz down to Toronto uh, in a very nice panoramic train, such as the one in the picture there. And also at the top of the hour, we showed a video that was partly the, the Bernina Express. And then uh, you connect by bus from Toronto to Lugano. So uh, it's, a, it's a very special experience. All in all, that takes about four hours. And um, the bus itself, I should mention, is seasonal only. So that only operates in the summertime. In the wintertime, um, the train still operates from St. Moritz to Toronto. Uh, next is the Golden Pass Panoramic. I've done this one. It's great. Um, it actually connects from Montreux to Zweisman. And uh, it, there's a couple of different kinds of trains. There's a more modern train that you can take, but there's also a kind of an older style Belle Epoque train, um, which has the kind of the wood paneling and it's it's all very just kind of old timey and special um, but uh, you know very very interesting and obviously a beautiful um, scenic train ride as well. And part of the Golden Pass also is this Lucerne to Interlaken Express. Um, sorry. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and this is an easy one also. This actually uh, passes through some amazing uh, Bernese Oberland areas. Uh, so I was just completely blown away by how beautiful the scenery was on this. Just, you know, little waterfalls and all sorts of things uh, just on every side, on both sides of the train. So you really, no matter what, you're going to be seeing uh, some beautiful stuff there. And it's, it's a very short train ride as well. Uh, the next is the Cothard uh, Panorama Express. And the special part about this one is that it combines boat and train. So you're actually taking a boat ride on Lake Lucerne from Lucerne to Fluelen, Flu, uh, uh, and then uh, the train from Fluelen to, down to uh, Lugano. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the boat ride itself is, is fantastic. Uh, you know, obviously you get to kind of see things from a different perspective, but this is one of those instances where, uh, as Martin said, the connecting is fantastic because as soon as you pull in on the boat, uh, into Flul and then uh, you can, the train station is just right there. So it's actually very easy to connect from the boat then onto the train. Uh, that one takes about five and a half hours. And by the way, all of these require seat reservations. Uh, so if they have a, if you have a rail pass, then you would just pay a supplement for the seat reservation. Uh, or if you buy the ticket, then you would need to buy the ticket with the seat reservation as well.
The next uh, slide for me is, this is my dream. It's the chocolate train. And this is, I think, fantastic for kids, for especially with people traveling with families. Um, it, it's a day trip. It's a full day experience. Basically, you're going from Montreux to Brock uh, and also to Gruyere. Uh, and you get to visit a chocolate factory. Where, when you're on board the train, you get croissants and hot chocolate. Uh, it's just really, again, a whole day experience. Um, the train will take you to the, to the fabric or the, the sorry, I almost said that in, in Spanish, but they take you to uh, the uh, the chocolate factory uh, and then you get to do a tour and, and everything else. And then, you you know, the train will take you back into Montreux. So it's a it's a round trip uh, day experience. And that one basically takes um, a, a full day. It's a full day experience. And on the way, you will really experience why Switzerland has the most delicious chocolate. You will see so many cows grazing out there and there's these pre-alpine meadows with all these herbs and that makes obviously the best milk and mixed with the cup cow beans. That's what results in the classic Swiss it, chocolate. It's all in the milk. And actually, I, we don't have a slide for this, but there's also a cheese train, uh, which is similar, where you can actually do, it's a full day experience. You get to go to a cheese factory, you get some a, a fondue lunch. So, you know, it's really, there's something for everybody, <laughs> especially if you're, you know, a, a cheese and chocolate fan like me. So Right. The chocolate train is uh, seasonal in summer. Whereas the cheese train that goes to the fondue places, fondue, that's what we eat in the winter time. So that operates in the winter time. That's how they, but they're in the same region. They both start in Montreux. Perfect. Thanks for adding that. Uh, now I mentioned that I would just going to do a, a very quick recap of some of the mountaintop excursions that can be done. And so some of these are actually fully covered. If you have a Swiss travel pass, um, one of those is, uh, the Mount Riggi, uh, train also the, uh, Stos, uh, which is actually a funicular if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then, um, also the, wait, don't tell me, don't tell me I'm forgetting. Um, Stanzerhorn is the third one. Stanzerhorn. Those three are covered, yes. Yes. So um, these are all obviously accessible from different different cities and everything else, but they all each have their like very uh, kind of um, thing that they are known for. So the Stanzerhorn, for example, I don't know how I could forget, but they you can actually go up a cable um, uh, gondola that is, or a cable car that is actually double decker. So the open top part area is actually open air. And then the bottom part is closed in, uh, which is uh, frightening at the same time as uh, exhilarating to think about. But uh, basically, you take that up to the mountain. And a lot of these, you actually have uh, multiple ways of, you know, going up one way and coming back down another. So you could go up by cogwheel train, for example, and then come back down by by cable car um, or vice versa. They, so there's lots of different choices. And again, a, any of these mountaintop excursions are just uh, just an adventure in and of itself. And then once you get to the top, there's lots of different things to do. Many of them will have, you know, restaurants or uh, at least one place to eat uh, and get something to drink, uh, depending on how big it is. Um, also, from my experience, sometimes you'll get up there and you'll be delighted by uh, um, an impromptu alpine horn show, uh, you know, where you have people actually either singing or playing their alpine horns. And of course, with the reverberation of the mountains and the echo, it's just it's it's just really it makes your skin like really kind of ooh, it, it's so great um so yeah that that's mountaintop excursions again these are all things that we can actually uh add uh to um the itinerary to the the grand train tour itineraries for you um and then uh, last but not least i did want to mention um that we have some international connections um that could be done easily from um uh, Switzerland. So just so you can kind of see how easily it is to connect with other countries as well. Um, somebody mentioned uh, the question of uh, the overnight train. So here's an example of like uh, Zurich to Berlin, you can do overnight and it takes about 11 and a half hours. Um, so that would mean you would leave thereabouts at like seven o'clock at night and you would get into Berlin at like seven o'clock in the morning, which is perfect. Um, but you can see here with the others, it's very easy to get to. So you could do Zurich to Paris in four hours and that's what 
with a high speed train. Uh, a lot of these are high speed trains. Um, you have Zurich to Frankfurt, uh, Zurich to Munich. Um, it's about an average of, of three to four hours uh, to another major European destination, which is great. Um, I'm very curious what the viewers uh are interested in as far as you know because we we the plan is for us to actually have other live stream events like this to talk about rail and rail travel within europe so if anybody has any requests uh for what the next destination should be please um leave it in the comments for us so that we can actually you know let let you know uh and maybe put something together like this again and um yeah, I, last but not least, of course, uh, I'd like to just cover, I mentioned the giveaways, right? So basically, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Martin, for, for offering uh, some of the uh, uh, itineraries. Sorry, we'll go through the giveaways and then we'll, I'll answer some questions if, if they're still on. But um, <laughs> we will be giving away um, an eight-day first-class Swiss travel pass. Um, so all you really need to do is... Um, uh, link in put go to the link in the comments you'll actually have to sign up with your email to enter uh you'll also have to like our tenant tours uh facebook page or also the swiss travel systems facebook page uh for bonus entries and then um we'll contact the winner uh on monday by email so it's as easy as that um they'll also be randomly selecting five winners um to uh give away a couple of other travel accessories and goodies so uh you know just stay tuned for that uh so that we can actually uh let you know when we'll be sending some stuff out to you. So uh, with that, uh, sorry, rushed there at the end, but I'd love to answer some questions. I'm, uh, hopefully there's some, some really good ones out there. Or, <laughs> here we go. Uh, are there assistance options for seniors uh, or people with limited mobility, uh, especially if they have to change trains? So there is a service you can book if you're really in a wheelchair. Then they wait for you at the defined uh, place on the platform with an uh, elevator to board the train. If you're fully dependent on the wheelchair. Other than that, there is not, they're not just uh, readily available. You really have to reserve that ahead. But the service exists, yes. For a wheelchair, and this is just my, my question for you, for, for a wheelchair, is there a discount for wheelchair tickets? There is no discounted uh, wheelchair tickets, no. Okay. Also, often uh, another question we often get is senior discounts. No, there's no senior discounts in, in uh, Switzerland. Okay. Yeah. Do we have guided uh, Switzerland trips? Uh, so uh, we actually can do uh, from everything from guided Swiss trips to private chauffeur Swiss trips as well. Um, so feel free to inquire more about that. Uh, there's a form that you can submit online uh, just asking for more information. But I mean, we, we specialize in custom itineraries. So really, if you can dream it, we can we can do it. Uh, and so um, definitely um, guided private chauffeur, um, there's it, it can be done. Absolutely. Okay, this is a good one. So what's what are the best months to travel? What's the weather like crowds, things like that. Um, so possible September trip, which I would think s September could be good. September is usually uh, one of the peak months for uh, travels from North America because school holidays are over in Europe. It's a little quieter and uh, it's the thunderstorms are over. Also, it's a magical month to visit Switzerland. It's really what I was going to say. September, October would be my recommendation. Um, usually we see a lot of visitors um, from Asia in spring. Those are their peak travel months. And then obviously July and August, when the school holidays, everything is, get, is getting pretty busy. That's why uh, fall, September, October uh, is, is a really recommendable travel time. <clears throat> then it gets a bit, a bit quiet before we enter winter. And winter is obviously a bit of a different travel style and activity wise. Uh, that's then December all the way to March mostly. Yeah, yeah that's a great question for sure. 
Ooh, what kind of wildlife can you view in Switzerland? Um, maybe you've heard of the ibex. The ibex is this majestic uh, mountain goat with the long horns. Uh, you see a lot of trophies in the in the restaurants. Uh, they're mostly above tree lines and they're very shy, so you often see them just from the distance. Uh, a little better chance is to see uh, the chamois, the alpine chamois, mm. uh, especially in spring. I mean, spring in higher alpine, that, that's like June when the snow melts, then they're uh, closer to the hiking trails. Mm -hmm. But we don't have any predators or so. Uh, Switzerland is not really very wild. It's fantastic, beautiful nature, but it is so accessible. There's hiking trails and gondolas all over the place and restaurants and so on. So we really have to do a hike further up to see wildlife. Uh, what you can see uh, often also is eagles and um, mm. vultures, bearded vultures. And I mean, if you consider Swiss cows wildlife, then you would definitely yeah. see plenty, plenty of those probably. Best plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Is it available? Is the Glacier Express available in November? I, it, you, when is, is it normally December that it, sometimes there's like a little bit of a closure? It is closed actually till December, the second week of December, yes. Um, so from October, end of October till the second week of December, that's the oh. actual time uh, it's closed. November is a really rather quiet time in those alpine resorts, not, not necessarily in the cities or in, in the major um, lake resorts or so, but that's a bit of the transition time between summer and, and winter time. That's why Glacier Express, that's their, month, that, that's their yearly maintenance months, if you wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, not in November, but prior, either first part of October or after the second week in December. The chocolate train is seasonal as well. That's summer, right? You said, Martin? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Only in summer uh, up to, I think, end of August now. Yeah. And then the cheese train only um, starting in December. Winter yeah. time. Mm hmm Yes, with the price of the ticket on the excellence class, the food and drink is included. Absolutely. So the supplement for excellence class is actually 420 Swiss francs or about 430, 40 uh, US dollars. Uh, that's that's quite a lot of, uh, of, an, of, of, of an additional fee. And yes, food and drinks are definitely included yeah. with, uh, with the concierge service there, yeah. But but it's not like um, catered food. It, the food is actually made on board the train, correct? So it's actually fresh food. Uh, so it's not like, uh, you know, on the airplane where it's just made somewhere else and then reheated. Yeah. It's actually made on board, which means that it's it's fresh. So to me, yeah. to me, one of the most fascinating aspects on the Glacier Express, it's not a high speed train on a flat track somewhere uh, through the countryside. It goes up and down continuously. It adds the cogwheel uh, up the mountain, then on the other side down again. And yes, in the middle of the train, there is this onboard kitchen where they do all the meals freshly prepared. Mm. They have their uh, service times, obviously, only in between the, the resorts when it's a flat level, that's when you mm. get the, the, the delicious meal served. And then once the cogwheel is on again, uh, you lean back and enjoy the scenery. Yeah. Hang in for a couple of nights on the train to eat. Yeah, I mean it's it's again the the if if we're talking about the the grand train tour, it can be modified. Really, obviously, you can always extend uh, if you wanted to actually do, uh, you know, Interlaken uh, to let's say on the way to the Jungfrau, and you actually want to stay in Wengen for a couple of nights. That's absolutely possible. So. Uh, it's it's a very charming uh, village when you actually pass by on the train. I, I wouldn't blame anybody who would want to get off the train and just stay there for a few days or a good long while. It's car free. It's one of these car free mm -hmm. villages because there is simply no way to build a road uh, across a vertical cliff. So that's why you take the train throughout the, the mountain that climbs all the way up to Jungfrau. That's the access to, to Wengen. And that's a specific uh, charm of these uh, car-free resorts. Yeah, That's where you want to stay a little longer. Right. 
so last question, it looks like. Uh, so uh, Glacier Express, as far as I know, should be available in May, right? I mean, there's, yeah, that's really peak months. So, uh, and hopefully by then it'll be back to the full schedule of four trains per day. Um, but uh, yeah, no, May, it should definitely be operating uh, daily by then at that point. Yeah. So thank you so much, Martin. I really can't thank you enough. Uh, I, I wish I could say it in, in many, many other languages, but I'll just say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your time. I know it's very late where you are right now, uh, and it's probably been a very long day for you, but uh, I really enjoyed speaking with you. And hopefully, again, we, we inspired people um, to uh, you know get get going to Switzerland again and and just you know have one of the most magical times that they will have, ever have for me it's been the the my trip to Switzerland is still on the top for sure so um if that hasn't come through I'll keep saying it over and over again so um thank you again for your time uh, my pleasure and welcome everybody to Switzerland in the future Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to everybody. Sorry we went over. Uh, we obviously had a lot of stuff to share, but uh, thank you for those who have stayed on the whole time. And uh, stay tuned for other destinations, hopefully. Uh, signing out. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. Bye. Bye, -bye.